Welcome to 5 Minutes with Phil. You hear that? That's a missed opportunity for some music. Repeating a song in a video like this is a perfect way of forcing you to listen to a song until you like it. Problem is, I don't have any songs that are suitable. My songs contain tunes and a wide range of tones, which makes them a poor choice for use as a backing track. And my dad's songs have been played to death and are all associated with existing series already. So until he finishes his new album that he's working on, I'll have to look elsewhere. But using somebody else's music seems like a missed opportunity as well, doesn't it? For a while, my channels didn't have any music. It was all voice, and it was very difficult for me to find a song that suited my content. Vsauce's music suited his videos. Jim Sterling's tunes worked with his. Why couldn't I have chosen one of those for my channels first? But obviously, the liking of the tune comes after the watching of the series. So it really is a case of forcing a song into something until people associate it with that thing. I now get people telling me that Atomic Amnesia needs case unboxing sounds to sound right, but having been listening to that song for 10 years, I don't think it does. So to all of you asking for permission to include my music in your videos, firstly, feel free to use them, but secondly, don't use them because you'd be better off finding some original song that can be fully associated with your content instead of using music that will forever be at least partly associated with my videos as well. This might surprise you, but I got a bit sidetracked when making this episode. I went through all of my old songs to try and find something suitable. I'll play some of them here, just because why not? These songs mean a lot to me, they transport me back to when I made them. Weird things like walking across a road to a corner shop, while well, I must have been listening to that bit of the tune on my mp3 player at the time, and so on. And I worry that if I use these in my new videos, they'll lose some of the original memories which are currently tied to them. That's why I'd rather use some new music for this new series. Music really is special, isn't it? With a lot of things in life, there's a degree of give and take. You don't get something for nothing. But music seems to be enjoyment that you can have for free. I enjoy listening to it, and then I enjoy listening to it again in a few years' time. It even helps to improve my memory by reminding me of stuff that I would otherwise have forgotten. It's all good, isn't it? Unless I'm punished for listening to songs in the afterlife, I don't see how there's any downside to it. I've had the same playlist for a year now, and I regret that, since it still reminds me of that time and nothing since. I have now remedied this. You'll be surprised to know that when making this video I got sidetracked again, this time going through the current top 40 song chart in the UK and picking out about a dozen tracks that I find tolerable. I know already that there will be some in this list that I'll end up skipping through and wondering why I ever included them, but there will be others that will grow on me until they're just as good as the ones I've been listening to for years already. I urge you to do the same because, like I said, there's no downside to doing this, other than the bizarre inclusion of UK Hun in my current playlist. I have a theory that music jumps a generation. You listen to your parents' stuff, and you listen to new stuff, with a bit of a gap in the middle. Growing up, I was exposed to my parents' music tastes, which meant I had a fondness for 80s stuff. And of course, music from when I was in my teens and 20s, since that's when I've made my strongest associations with stuff. But that leaves a gap in the middle, spanning the period of time between the 90s and early noughties, where maybe I haven't listened to so much stuff, aside from a barrage of Spice Girls and S Club 7, thanks to my younger siblings. And a CD of Take That which inexplicably found its way into the car stereo and that we as a family listened to for far too long before bothering to take it out again. But yeah, with this theory of mine, it would mean that somebody 10 years younger than me, with younger parents, would have an almost entirely different taste in music, effectively skipping the music periods that my parents and myself listened to. It seems ridiculous that music is so much about association and exposure. Whenever I find a new song that I immediately like, it's either an 80s song that I haven't heard before, or a remake of one that I have. For anything else, I have to listen to it a number of times before I grow to like it. But I refuse to get stuck in the same era forevermore. And that's why I'll continue to try and find new songs in the top 40 that I will listen to and to try and create new associations with, even if it does require a bit more work to listen to them now than back when I was working in McDonald's, subjected to the same songs over and over again every day. I've never been a fan of radio stations, especially when I'm trying to do something else, even something as autonomous as driving. I would much rather be able to listen to the sound of the engine than the fuzzy, overly compressed tones of a radio show. Whenever I'm in a car, I'll either put on my own playlist or I'll listen to audiobooks. I've gone through The Hobbit, The Art of War, twice, and pretty much everything that Malcolm Gladwell has done, and these things have opened my mind up to so much stuff. He really inspired me when I first started on YouTube, and I think he's one of the most persuasive people I've ever listened to. I can thoroughly recommend his audiobooks if you want to turn a boring commute to work into something that you look forward to every day. I only regret the hours I wasted before discovering the incredible world of audiobooks. 
maybe I should get sponsored by Audible.